I'd like to ask Captain Bond to just a quick one. Oh, silence. I love it. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Vanessa. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vanessa Sandoval, and I am the Chief of Staff for Councilmember Sergio Jimenez. Um, and I'm here to provide just a quick update as to some of the work that we're doing at City Hall and some of the projects that we're working on specifically in uh, your neighborhood. Um, and also want to hand out this sign-in sheet. So we have our newsletter uh, that we are publishing every month, our newsletter for the month of April, uh, which will be coming out probably on Monday. Um, also, our listserv is where we communicate with folks. We send email blasts about events and other things that are happening in the district. So if you're not currently receiving emails from us, and you put your information on this sign sheet here, that will add you to our listserv and can keep you more regularly updated. But if you're um, receiving those, then... If you're receiving them, then you're already on and you don't need to fill out the sign-in sheet. This is just for folks that aren't getting our emails who would like to. Um, I'll also hand out some cards. Feel free to take one so that you can contact me with specific questions if you need to after today. Um, and uh, Greg asked me to provide an update on um, the participatory budget. So just in general, our office is getting settled in. Um, Council Member Jimenez has now been on the job officially five months. Um, we were fully staffed as, a, as of the end of uh, February, so we've had about a month with full staff. Um, we're working on various events that will be coming up. The first one is on Saturday, you might have heard, we have a hike of Coyote Ridge. Uh, we're doing this with the Open Space Authority. Uh, we're starting at 9 a.m. and we're going to be hiking up. It's about a three-mile hike along Coyote Ridge. And we're going to get a tour of all of the wildflowers and the butterflies. So it's a wonderful time to go out there if you haven't had the opportunity. Um, and Open Space Authority does regular tours. So if your neighborhood association or anyone else is interested in going on a lead tour of Coyote Hike, you can contact the Open Space Authority. You can contact us. There are a few more spots for our hike on uh, Saturday. We're taking up about, right now we have about 46 people, but we have a maximum of 50. So you're welcome to join us. If it's raining, it might be moved to Sunday, but if it's just drizzle, we're doing it in the rain. So uh, you're welcome to join us. And then the other thing is that we have the Great America, uh, American Litter Pickup happening. So that's going to happen on April 22nd. Uh, I have several flyers that I left on the back table for you to take. We have three sites this year, Oak Grove High School, Santa Teresa High School, and Great Oaks Park. Um, and we're looking for volunteers to come out and help us with the pickup. So this is one of the opportunities that we have to sort of clean up our district. Um, and in terms of other beautification events, we are open and looking for neighborhood associations to partner with for dumpster days. So if that's something that's of interest to your neighborhood association, please, Greg, feel free to reach out to me and we can coordinate something. We're trying to schedule several of those within the next coming weeks um, for folks. And um, really, that's those are sort of the main things that we're working on right now, the community events. Uh, we're hoping to do a few things this summer, and once those details become available, we'll be sharing them through the newsletter. Um, and then in terms of the participatory budgeting, so it's taken us a little bit longer to get the ball rolling on that than we had originally expected. I know Osh's office, uh, former council member Osh Kalra, when he left, he was really hopeful that we could do the second round by January. Uh, it's taken a little bit longer because we had to staff up first and really get to know the process. Uh, so what we're doing right now is we're currently in the process of establishing a steering committee. Uh, we want a steering committee of seven members to represent each of the seven um, areas in the Bernalta Bailey um, area that, that falls under the Calpine settlement. We have five confirmed and we're looking for two more specifically from the Santa Teresa area and the Chantilly area. So if you know of residents who are interested in participating in the steering committee, please feel free to share my contact information with them if they live in those two areas. We have two representatives already from Los Paseos, two from Metcalf, um, and then the, and Avenida Spada. So we're just looking for Chantilly and Santa Teresa now. Uh, once we have the steering committee members confirmed, the seven steering committee members will come together and basically create the, the structure of the round two voting. Um, and we're hoping to have that done within the next couple of weeks, and then we will go ahead and promote the voting process. As of now, um, the way that it's going to work is that the 
the projects that were submitted for voting in the first round will be resubmitted again. Some of them may be modified to fit the new reduced budget after the, uh, the deduction from the project that won the first round. So it's about a little over $400,000 that are left to spend, and there are about nine projects that are gonna be up for vote. Um, and they're gonna be the, similar, the same projects that were submitted the first time, just with modifications for budgets. Um, so we're hoping to schedule the voting process so that you can come in and actively vote, um, ideally by, by mid next month. Um, hopefully we don't have to push it back any later than that. Uh, but we plan to do an extensive and robust outreach campaign to make sure that everybody knows what projects are being voted on, when the voting uh, is happening, uh, allow for online voting as well as in-person voting, and make sure that we outreach to all of the communities so everybody gets an opportunity to choose a project. Vanessa, how are, how are you going to communicate with the, the original budget delegates? Because several people in this room were budget delegates. We're, so I've right. had zero communication relative to the community process so far. So the budget okay. delegates, it's my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you worked with city staff to come up with a budget for, the specific, for a specific project. Um, so those budgets don't have to be revisited at this point unless there's going to be a change to that particular project. In that case, we would, the person who submitted the project or who was uh, behind the project would have to meet again with city staff to figure out, uh, you know, it's a million dollar project and we only have half that, so what do you want to cut out and what's that going to cost? So that's going to be something that will be happening after we have the steering committee moving forward and we reach out to the people who are supporting or who submitted the projects in the first place. Do you have I'm to your Some of the projects involve bundled amounts that can, might be broken down or broken up differently. So, right. so there is some work that the budget delegates will have to do. Yes. Uh, yes. I want to make sure that doesn't get lost in the shop. Yeah. No. There, there will be, and we will be reaching out to those folks when the when the time when the time comes. Right now, it's really to set to get the steering committee together to set up the voting process, and then once we have that, we'll have some time for people to modify their projects, and then we'll go on to the voting. Do you happen to know what the amount? Last question what the amount is? It's a little over $400,000. So I believe that the camera project was 645, uh, which- 595. Oh, 480 left. Oh yeah, so then there's 480 left, yeah. And that includes? And that includes the, the $75,000 um, contribution from former member uh, call results. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Great, thank you. And your next newsletter, how often do they come up? We're, we're doing them monthly, and we try to get them out within the second week of the month. So next week is our deadline to get them. So we'll keep an eye out for All right, we've got to move on. One question? What is happening with the camera project now? Is it being run by the city, or who's... The camera project will be run by a nonprofit. The nonprofit hasn't yet uh, been made public, but what's the idea is that the city will contract with a nonprofit organization to manage the project and implement it and put up the cameras and work with the camera company. The city is not going to be involved in that process. It's gonna be an MOU, a memorandum of understanding, that's written with a nonprofit agency. And so I believe that that's underway. The last conversation that I had with Lee Wilcox, because he's the one who's taking over at this point, is that that MOU should be finalized within the next couple of weeks, okay. um, and then the project will, will, will move forward. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item before we let Mike speak. We can be here as long as you want. Um, I've sent out a legal fireworks uh, letter to address to San Ricardo, to the members of the Los Pacific Neighborhood Association. And what we're trying to do is get agreement from the members that that letter um, can be sent to the mayor and represent your feelings about illegal fireworks. And when, when we approve that letter, we will add our name, Los Paseos Neighborhood Association, to the bottom of that letter. So have you all had a chance to take a look at that? It's on your table there. Um, I'll tell you what we're gonna do with this. Take a look at that. I wanna have a vote uh, after Mr. Wasserman speaks. And decide if we're going to include our name in the bottom of that letter. Before we go home, we have to decide that. Thank you. Mike. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. 
Good evening. My lovely assistant here is passing out three pieces of information. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so I've got three handouts that I'm handing out to you now. By show of hands, how many people here currently get my newsletter? None. One. Not good. Two. All right. Here's a clipboard. If you can just put your name and email address on it if you wish to get my newsletter, please just do that. You don't need city, skip, call, um, phone, all that other information. Um, <coughs> there's a pen that you've got. Oh, okay. Good. You're set. To give you a little idea, when I got into office six years ago, my predecessor, Don Gage, had 220 emails in his database after 14 years. My monthly newsletter now goes out the first Wednesday of each month. We push it out. It's a one-page newsletter of information and then four pages of a community calendar for non-profit organizations in my district. Okay? Now, we'll get into what my district is and county and city and all the rest. Our newsletter now goes out on the first Wednesday of each month all we've done for seven years, to 30,000 people. In addition, you've heard of Nextdoor. I heard you talking about Nextdoor earlier. So we have Facebook. We have Nextdoor. And I do a little thing in the Almaden Times. But each month now, because of social media, I put out something once a month, also in the Morgan Hill Times, once a month to 110,000 people in my district. That's what social media has enabled between now and my predecessor just seven years ago when you have, used to print something up and try fold it and stuff it in an envelope and put a stamp on it. There was all that cost. Here, all this information can come in. Links can be provided. You can press a button and it goes out. My office now reaches 110,000 emails a month in my district, wow. which is one of five districts. I don't want to take on the San Jose Mercury or just the Mercury. They're not the San Jose Mercury anymore. But I, I think our subscription rate is pretty good. And of course, it's free. So if you wish to get our newsletter and to learn a little bit about what's going on in your Santa Clara County District, please subscribe. There is no back and forth. We've never put out more than one newsletter a month. It's the first Wednesday of each month. Your email doesn't go anywhere. You don't get anything from it. We've never had anybody complain. At the very bottom, if you want to get off at any time, click the button. Okay, so that's as simple as it can be. The first thing I want to mention is we had Vanessa speaking about Council Member Jimenez. We have the captain here. You know about the city. What I've been on is a mission the last six and a half, almost seven years now, to educate people about the county. The county is altogether different. Thank you for passing. There's the federal government, the state government, the county government, the city government. Okay? There's four different governments. The reason there's four different governments is they do four different things. There is some overlap, but they each have a unique mission, a purpose, if you will. Santa Clara County is made up of two million people. It's a big deal. To give you an idea, one of my interns told me, we have more constituents than 14 state governors. Wow. I get a joke every now and then. Somebody says to me, says, Mike, what do you want to do after, after you've done this job? Okay? And I'm very flattered. I've got the highest, highest ranking Republicans, the highest ranking Democrats supporting me, and they have been, and that's wonderful. But I joke with that person, and they say, do you ever want to be governor? And I said, well, it depends on what state. <laughs> okay? But Santa Clara County, you guys, we're a big deal. We have more people living here than 14 states have. Than 92 countries. There's some really little countries like Liechtenstein. But we use these numbers to our advantage. But Santa Clara County's big. GDP, population, over 100 languages are spoken in Santa Clara County. More than any other county in the nation. We're bigger than San Francisco County and Santa Cruz County and a couple of towns combined. I often pick on San Francisco County because they don't even have a football team anymore. But that's another thousand <laughs> joke. All right. So I want you to know when I'm here talking about 
is Santa Clara County. San Jose is the largest city of Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. A million people out of the two million. The other 14 cities equal about a million. So San Jose is the big dog, 50% of the population. San Jose is the 10th largest city in the nation. Okay, It's a big deal. San Jose has 4,500 employees. I think about 4,500 employees. Now let me give you an idea. Santa Clara County has 19,000. Santa Clara County has got a six and a half billion dollar budget. We spend 17 million dollars a day, 365 days a year. One of the questions was about the funding for Santa Clara County. Two thirds, three fourths of our money comes from the federal and the state government. They give us money to do specific things. The federal government gives us money and says, administer a food stamp program. That's what we do. Not the city, not the state. Okay, That's what the county's in charge of doing. One of many things that we're given money to do. When I came here six and a half, almost seven years ago, I came here as a certified financial planner, a registered tax preparer. Okay, I'm a modern Republican. I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-marriage equality. And I'm pro-gun rights. I'm kind of right in the middle. When I got here, I thought, well, I'm going to be fiscally conservative, and I'm going to bring our budget down, and I'm going to cut costs, and I'm going to do this and that, et cetera, et cetera. I was going to come here and run Santa Clara County like a business, right? Well, the budget the first year went down, and I thought, look what I did. The reason it went down is because the federal and state government gave us less money, and so our budget went down. The next year, the next year, and the next year, as the economy turned around, more taxes generated, more services needed, our budget went up. So our budget's gone up four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half billion dollars. People say to me, Wasserman, you're out of control. What the well, only about a fourth of our budget is general fund. You know when you make out your property tax payments twice a year? Right about now? Yeah, they're due Monday. Okay. They're late after Monday. No, they're due. They've been due for two months. They're due Monday. Okay. If they're postmarked Monday. They're if they're okay. postmarked, they're, allowed, they're acceptable. Yeah. I'll make you, I'll give you a tip. Always send your property taxes in 30 days early. It does not change the amount you pay at all. You won't be late if there's a mix up, if it's lost. And if you're one day late, it's a 10% penalty. I did that one time. I managed six shopping centers in six cities. And one time I missed a property tax bill. It's a 10% penalty on a $30,000 bill. Being one day late. So instead of, what's the deadline? April, December? Just, uh, uh, just, yeah, April, December. Okay, just change your ticket or file, pay them March and November. It's the same amount of money, it's the same distance between months. Then you'll do it every November, that's every 12 months, every March, every 12 months. Same as now, every April and every December. Yes? If you pay by automatic, by bank transfer, you don't have to depend on the post office. You can do that. All I'm saying to you is something can always go wrong. It is not worth the hell or the hassle. Pay it a month early. It's not like you're earning any interest in the bank these days. Right? Okay? So, that, that that's a tip. But what I'm telling you about property taxes and about the general fund and about the budget, when you write your check out to Macy's or to Safeway, it goes to Macy's and Safeway. When you write your check to the County of Santa Clara, you have the right to expect it's going to the County of Santa Clara. People yell at me all the time, do you know how much I pay in property taxes? The reality is, federal government, state government, county government, city government. The state government said, county, we want you to be the bad guy. We want you to assess everybody's property, personal and real, and bill them, and if they're late, fine them, okay, and argue with them, and bill them, and collect their money, and all the rest. Then when you collect the money, we want you to send it off to us at the state in Sacramento. So twice a year we have hundreds of millions of dollars come in. We take all the checks, we ship it off to Sacramento. Three, four months later, we get 18 cents on the dollar back. Wow. You make your check out to the county of Santa Clara, and thank you, okay? And thank you for your 18 cents on the dollar. 
The cities get, depending on what city it is, some get a little more, some get a little less, but the average is 13 to 14 cents. So the county gets 18 cents of the dollar you wrote a check to Santa Clara County. And the city you live in that you didn't write the check to, they'll end up getting about 13 cents back from Sacramento. And the state of California will get about 65 cents of the check that you wrote to Santa Clara County from the tax collector, Santa Clara County tax collector, the Santa Clara County assessor. Okay, I hate this rule. I hate it. Because people just see who they make it out to. They come up to our sixth floor making their, their payments, and they think we're snidely whiplash. But it's the job of the county because we're lower on the food, in the food chain. Yes? So you talk about the garbage now. So you know, that's in our tax also. In your property tax bill, yes. okay, on the right side of your bill, those are assessments, many of which you voted upon yourself. Okay, In San Jose, it's not a library district. Seven other cities voted to charge themselves each year a special tax to fund their libraries. So in recession, boom or bust, their libraries have an independent funding uh, source and are open. In the last, not the last, the first, but the last recession, called the Great Recession, a number of libraries in San Jose and in other cities that didn't have a separate funding source that depended on general funds, they were closed or hours reduced. You also have in there uh, assessments for school. That goes directly to school. You have water district. It goes directly to there. Da -da 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 -da. And the state has mandated that the county is to be the one to print those things up and bill and charge. We are simply the bill collector. We don't get a thank you letter from the state of California. We don't get interest on the float. Can you imagine the interest on the float that they hold on to before they give us back our money? So, back to my point about our budget. Whenever you see the county's budget, $4 billion, $6 billion, $5 billion, whatever it is, it's all a function of how much money we receive. By law, federal, state, county, and city must balance the budget. People, they go, we balance the budget. Well, so what? The law is you must balance the budget by a certain date. Federal government tends, tends to push it towards the very end, but the city and the county are very good about getting it done on time. But all a balanced budget means is you estimate this amount of income and you say you're going to spend it this way. Your income and expense is equal. You balance the budget. Big deal. Not a big deal. If you have extra money, put it in something else. If you have extra money, put it in reserve. If you don't have enough money, cut somewhere else. Okay, that, That's all part of that. But what I wanted to get down to was the county. I'm here to talk to you about the county. I didn't know a lot about the county when I came here from my little bubble in Los Gatos. You have a little bubble here based on your crime rate here. Santa Clara County is a bubble compared to the rest of the nation. Santa Clara County is a bubble compared to Fresno and Minesta, parts of California. Okay, What goes on here, what you experience life here, is not normal for the United States. Federal government sends us money, state government sends us money. Federal government sends some money to the state for distribution to us. When it's all done and said, about three-fourths of our budget comes from the federal and state government with strings attached. You must spend this money on this. So once I learned all of this, I realized how little I knew, even though I've been eight years in Los Gatos, a couple stints as mayor, and I've lived here for 60 years. I said, most of the people must not know either. So I took it upon myself to get the word out, which is why the 110,000 people now get word where their property taxes go to and what services you receive, getting that word out. The phrase I coined is that the county provides real life help. Our number one priority is health and safety. Okay, have any of you seen the uh, Valley Medical Center on Bascom mm -hmm. that's been going up for 10 years or so? Yeah. Okay, it's coming to an end finally. That's a whole different story. Um, we have more employees working at Valley Medical Center and in our clinics than the city of San Jose has in police and fire and parks and everything. Because we are the main provider for health services, clinics, hospitals, etc. When you call 911, it goes to County Pump. Oh, you'll love this one. I got just crucified. I was speaking to a group, this person was from Mountain View. 
And you've heard in the last few years how the county jail system has been in the news. There was a gentleman three years ago who was in jail, who shouldn't have been in jail, and three guys came and beat him to death, and they're being prosecuted for, for murder, as they should be, okay? We didn't have a place for that, that mentally ill person to be, and then three people came and beat him, and so we're prosecuting him for murder, which is a horrible thing. I don't know how many of you have been here long enough, but in 1975 and 1976, I worked at Agnew State Hospital. Yep. Does anyone here remember? A couple people remember Agnew State Hospital? Well, a little while back, the state closed Agnew State Hospital. I guess that's because mental illness went away. <laughs> I, I don't know. But they didn't reopen something else. So that responsibility fell onto the county. The state just said, we're not going to operate a mental hospital anymore. So county need to do that. So the county's now looking to create more beds and facilities and partner and da 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 to do that. A little while back, about three years ago, the federal government told the state government, your jails, state, excuse me, your prisons, counties have jails, states have prisons. Your prisons are overcrowded. If you want to continue receiving federal funding, you must reduce the population in your prisons. The state said, you betcha, no problem. Hello, county? Remember we're lower on the, on the mm -hmm. food chain? Okay. County? Our jails are overcrowded, our prisons are overcrowded, we're going to send you some people. And I'm going, but, but no thank you, no. <laughs> and they did. They're up here and they start, that's our new responsibility. So Santa Clara County and other counties said, whoa, unfunded mandate here, if you're going to send us this, we're going to have more people and more severe people, more violent, more ill people. We want money for more correctional officers and more, more probation officers. The state said, that's a reasonable request. We'll give you money, and they gave us money. And they sent us more prisoners from their prison to our jail. And we hired more correctional officers, and we hired more probation officers to handle the load. Well, 10, 11 months later, we're waiting for the next check from the state. We give them a call and say, Hunstuff, you must have forgot. Uh, where's our payment for next year? Lost in the mail. Well, we're not really sure we can do that in the budget. That uh, so all the counties got an uproar, went to the state, and said, hey, wait a minute. If we're mandated to take on this responsibility, we've got to get this funding. Okay? And the state has been sending funding to us for that purpose. But there's a big difference. Individuals such as us here, okay, you all look very tough, but there's probably tougher people out in the world. Individuals such as us might commit a crime of some sort. Hopefully, God forbid, not rape or murder or assault. And you would be sentenced to jail, which is county, county jail. You would go to our jail. You would serve about a six to nine month term at jail. However, if you're convicted of a felony, a violent felony, you're sent up the river. I know I can use that term because some of you remember Agnes. You're sent up the river to prison where there's other people. So lower gang members, small offenses, jail. Higher gang members, bigger offenses, prison. At prisons, the glass is thicker, the doorknobs are, 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 are stronger, there's more security guards, correctional officers, per prisoner ratio. It's a prison. You've got more violent, physical people that are there. If I killed two or three people, what's one more guard? Okay? That's, that's what you have in prisons. White collar crime, jail, county jail. How do you stay in the county jail six to nine months? We now have people in our county jail serving 17 year terms. We now have more correctional officers being attacked than ever before. We have more uh, inmate on inmate attacks than ever before. And when I said about that person in Mountain View, he was saying, uh, Wasserman, you guys are doing a horrible job operating your jail. You've got all this stuff going on. You never hear a thing about Mountain View's jail. I said, that's true. Or Sunnyvale's jail. Or Las Gattis's jail. Or San Jose's jail. Monsterino's jail. The county has the jail. You wonder about county services. You wonder about where all this money goes, what you're paying for. Okay? When a bad guy commits a crime, 
captain and his people, they arrest him. They bring him to county jail. Ultimately, they'll go to the court, which is staffed.